Post-structuralism, sometimes referred as the French theory, is associated with the works of a series of mid-20th century French continental philosophers and critical theorists who came to international prominence in the 1960s and 1970s. The term is defined by its relationship to the system before it structuralism an intellectual movement developed in Europe from the early to mid-20th century. Structuralism proposes that one may understand human culture by means of a structure modeled on language i.e., structural linguistics that differs from concrete reality and from abstract ideas a third order that mediates between the two. Post structuralist authors all present different critiques of structuralism, but common themes include the rejection of the self sufficiency of structuralism and an interrogation of the binary oppositions that constitute its structures. Writers whose works are often characterized as post structuralist include Jacques Derrida, Michel Foucault, Giles Deleuze, Judith Butler, Jean Baudrillard, and Julia Kristeva. Although many theorists who have been called post structuralist have rejected the label. Existential phenomenology is a significant influence. Colin Davis has argued that post structuralists might just as accurately be called post phenomenologists. Theory Post structuralist philosophers like Derrida and Foucault did not form a self conscious group, but each responded to the traditions of phenomenology and structuralism. The idea that knowledge could be centered on the beholder is rejected by structuralism, which claims to be a more secure foundation for knowledge. In phenomenology, this foundation is experiential in itself. In structuralism, knowledge is founded on the «structures» that make experience possible, concepts, and language or signs. By contrast, post-structuralism argues that founding knowledge either on pure experience phenomenology or systematic structures structuralism is impossible. This impossibility was not meant as a failure or loss, but rather as a cause for celebration and liberation. A major theory associated with structuralism is binary opposition. This theory proposes that there are frequently used pairs of opposite but related words, concepts, often arranged in a hierarchy. Examples of common binary pairs include enlightenment, romantic, male, female, speech, writing, rational, emotional, signifier, signified, symbolic, imaginary. Post-structuralism rejects the notion of the dominant word in the pair being dependent on its subservient counterpart. The only way to properly understand the purpose of these pairings is to assess each term individually, and then its relationship to the related term. <laughs> Post-structuralism and structuralism Structuralism was an intellectual movement in France in the 1950s and 1960s that studied the underlying structures in cultural products such as texts and used analytical concepts from linguistics, psychology, anthropology, and other fields to interpret those structures. It emphasized the logical and scientific nature of its results. Post-structuralism offers a way of studying how knowledge is produced and critiques structuralist premises. It argues that because history and culture condition the study of underlying structures, both are subject to biases and misinterpretations. A post-structuralist approach argues that to understand an object e a text, it is necessary to study both the object itself and the systems of knowledge that produced the object. Historical versus descriptive view Post-structuralists generally assert that post-structuralism is the historical context surrounding the arts, while structuralism is considered descriptive of the present. This terminology is derived from Ferdinand de Saussure's distinction between the views of historical diachronic and descriptive synchronic reading. From this basic distinction, post-structuralist studies often emphasize history to analyze descriptive concepts. By studying how cultural concepts have changed over time, post-structuralists seek to understand how the same concepts are understood by readers in the present. For example, Michel Foucault's Madness and Civilization is both an observation of history and an inspection of cultural attitudes about madness. The theme of history in modern continental thought can be linked to such influences as Georg Wilhelm Friedrich Hegel, Friedrich Nietzsche's On the Genealogy of Morals and Martin Heidegger's Being and Time. Topic. Scholars between both movements 
The uncertain distance between structuralism and poststructuralism is further blurred by the fact that scholars rarely label themselves as poststructuralist. Some scholars associated with structuralism, such as Roland Barthes and Foucault, also became noteworthy in poststructuralism. Controversy Some observers from outside the post-structuralist camp have questioned the rigor and legitimacy of the field. American philosopher John Searle argued in 1990 that, "...the spread of post-structuralist literary theory is perhaps the best known example of a silly but non-catastrophic phenomenon." Similarly, physicist Alan Sokol in 1997 criticized the postmodernist, poststructuralist gibberish that is now hegemonic in some sectors of the American Academy. Literature scholar Norman Holland argued that poststructuralism was flawed due to reliance on Saussure's linguistic model, which was seriously challenged by the 1950s and was soon abandoned by linguists. Saussure's views are not held, so far as I know, by modern linguists, only by literary critics and the occasional philosopher. Strict adherence to Saussure has elicited wrong film and literary theory on a grand scale. One can find dozens of books of literary theory bogged down in signifiers and signifieds, but only a handful that refer to Chomsky." David Foster Wallace wrote, The deconstructionist, deconstructionist and post-structuralist mean the same thing, by the way, post-structuralist is what you call a deconstructionist who doesn't want to be called a deconstructionist. See the debate over the ownership of meaning as a skirmish in a larger war in Western philosophy over the idea that presence and unity are ontologically prior to expression. There's been this long-standing deluded presumption, they think, that if there is an utterance then there must exist a unified, efficacious presence that causes and owns that utterance. The post-structuralists attack what they see as a post-Platonic prejudice in favor of presence over absence and speech over writing. We tend to trust speech over writing because of the immediacy of the speaker, he's right there, and we can grab him by the lapels and look into his face and figure out just exactly what one single thing he means. But the reason why post-structuralists are in the literary theory business at all is that they see writing, not speech, as more faithful to the metaphysics of true expression. For Barthes, Derrida, and Foucault, writing is a better animal than speech because it is iterable, it is iterable because it is abstract, and it is abstract because it is a function not of presence but of absence, the reader's absent when the writer's writing, and the writer's absent when the reader's reading. For a deconstructionist, then, a writer's circumstances and intentions are indeed a part of the context of a text, but context imposes no real cinctures on the text's meaning, because meaning in language requires a cultivation of absence rather than presence, involves not the imposition but the erasure of consciousness. This is so because these guys Derrida following Heidegger and Barthes Mallarmé and Foucault God knows who see literary language as not a tool but an environment. A writer does not wield language, he is subsumed in it. Language speaks us, writing writes, etc. History Post-structuralism emerged in France during the 1960s as a movement critiquing structuralism. According to J. G. Mercuyor a love-hate relationship with structuralism developed among many leading French thinkers in the 1960s. In a 1966 lecture, "'Structure, Sign, and Play in the Discourse of the Human Sciences' Jacques Derrida presented a thesis on an apparent rupture in intellectual life. Derrida interpreted this event as a decentering of the former intellectual cosmos. Instead of progress or divergence from an identified center, Derrida described this event as a kind of play. In 1967, Barthes published The Death of the Author, in which he announced a metaphorical event, the death of the author as an authentic source of meaning for a given text. Barthes argued that any literary text has multiple meanings, and that the author was not the prime source of the work's semantic content. The «death of the author», Barthes maintained, was the «birth of the reader» as the source of the proliferation of meanings of the text. The period was marked by the rebellion of students and workers against the state in May 1968. Major works <laughs> Barthes and the need for metalanguage 
Bartz in his work, Elements of Semiology 1967, advanced the concept of the «metalanguage». A metalanguage is a systematized way of talking about concepts like meaning and grammar beyond the constraints of a traditional first order language. In a metalanguage, symbols replace words and phrases. Insofar as one metalanguage is required for one explanation of first order language, another may be required, so metalanguages may actually replace first order languages. Bartz exposes how this structuralist system is regressive, orders of language rely upon a metalanguage by which it is explained, and therefore deconstruction itself is in danger of becoming a metalanguage, thus exposing all languages and discourse to scrutiny. Bartz's other works contributed deconstructive theories about texts. <laughs> Derrida's lecture at Johns Hopkins The occasional designation of post-structuralism as a movement can be tied to the fact that mounting criticism of structuralism became evident at approximately the same time that structuralism became a topic of interest in universities in the United States. This interest led to a colloquium at Johns Hopkins University in 1966 titled, "...The Languages of Criticism and the Sciences of Man," to which such French philosophers as Derrida, Bartz, and Lacan were invited to speak. Derrida's lecture at that conference, "'Structure, Sign, and Play in the Human Sciences'", was one of the earliest to propose some theoretical limitations to structuralism, and to attempt to theorize on terms that were clearly no longer structuralist. The element of "'play' in the title of Derrida's essay is often erroneously interpreted in a linguistic sense, based on a general tendency towards puns and humor, while social constructionism as developed in the later work of Michel Foucault is said to create play in the sense of strategic agency by laying bare the levers of historical change. Many see the importance of Foucault's work to be in its synthesis of this social, historical account of the operation of power see governmentality. See also Topic Authors The following are often said to be post-structuralist or to have had a post-structuralist period Topic References Topic Sources Topic External links Structure, Sign, and Play in the Discourse of the Human Sciences, Jacques Derrida The Baudrillard Dictionary edited by Richard G. Smith. "'Some Post-Structural Assumptions' John Lai Talking Pomo, an analysis of the postmodern movement, by Steve Mizrach Information on Michel Foucault, including an archive of writings and lectures Poststructuralism Info, a collaborative web site that aims to allow users not only to describe post-structuralist ideas, but to create new ideas and concepts based on post-structuralist foundations. <laughs>